Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Kaggle competition that we are going to have for this semester. This semester being the spring 2019 semester. This competition is open to both students in my class and just members from the general internet. This is ran on Kaggle in class, so it's a data set that I'm putting up there that you can compete with each other and with members of the general internet. Usually I have at least a couple of people from the internet actually join in and compete along with my students. There's over 40 students competing this semester, so they'll it should be it should be a pretty interesting competition. This is always very popular with my class, so I want to give you now the information for this. The Kaggle ends on April 16th, so the day after tax day here in the United States, April 16th, 2019. You can find links to all the information on my course website, so go ahead and follow me if you want to get the latest updates. The class is here, the T81 Deep Learning, and Kaggle is Module 8. So open up Module 8 in GitHub. Okay, this is Module 8. Just scroll all the way to the bottom. Here is a link to the current Kaggle project, Spring 2019, and these are past ones. You might want to look at some of the past ones. I did post the code for the winning solution for Fall 2018. Both of these, Spring 2019 and Fall 2018, are both regressions, so you might be able to reuse some of the code. Let's go ahead and look at this semester's Kaggle assignment. All right, here is the main page for this. Yours will look similar. You won't have the host uh, thing here. And it's also saying this competition has not yet been launched. It'll be launched at the same time that I release this video. So you should be able to go to the Kaggle competition. I have links to both the Kaggle competition and my Get, GitHub repository in the in the description of this video. Also, if you're watching this past April 2016, you can certainly still submit to this submit solutions to this Kaggle for evaluation, but you won't affect the leaderboard. You will not be competing against against anybody, such as how how Kaggles work. This Kaggle makes use of zip code data that was compiled by the US government, particularly the IRS. That's what the little logo up there that you'll see on the graphics, It's that's the original logo now in the public domain that the, the US government used for, for zip codes. Now this, if you, just like any Kaggle, if you, you want to probably go and first just look at the leaderboard, there won't be anybody else some, uh, competing yet. I do put in a one benchmark, so the mean score prediction. So I was able to get an RMSE of 14 just by putting in the average value for the score that you're trying to predict. So this is the absolute, the absolute bottom. If you are doing worse than this, then your model is not even doing as good as the average one. You should be able to score better than that. When you look at a data page in Kaggle, they will show you the different files that are available for you to download. You can click the little download icon and download any of these. Again, yours might look a little different because I am allowed to edit these, but uh, since I'm administering it, but the files that you have are train, test, and sample submission. Train is what you're going to use to train your model on, just like any Kaggle competition. Test is what you're going to use to form your submission. We'll look at each of these files, but basically it you're going to essentially fill in the answers for test and then um, submit that. And that's what you're going to be scored on. The data fields that we're dealing with, there's really just three. You're going to have to link in external data to really fit any sort of a model on there. The ID is just the row ID. That is how I know when you're submitting something which row you're actually giving me an answer for. Zip code is the US zip code that this data is for. And score, this is what you're trying to predict. This is your this is your Y or your your target. This is basically it's a business score that I have calculated from other data sets. We're trying to see if we can predict it for unknown zip codes based on known zip codes. So you're going to be given the score for the train set, but you have no idea what it is for the test set. We're seeing how well we can predict this sort of on a zip code by zip code level. 
I don't give you the exact details on exactly what the score is coming from. It is essentially the saturation of a particular type of uh, business in that particular zip code. So we know this for a lot of zip codes, but we also don't know it for uh, potentially a lot more zip codes. We want to be able to, um, to predict this. Let's go ahead and download some of the data files just to see what they look like. Let's start with train. Okay, I am simply viewing train in a Excel spreadsheet. This is the ID field. You'll notice that the IDs are not continuous straight up. So like one, the reason one is missing is because one is in the test set. And we'll see the test set. The test set looks basically just like this, except you only have the ID and the zip code. You do not have the score. You need to fill in the score to submit it. This is the score. So these are values that you know for the zip codes that are in the test set. The score, you know this for the training set, but you don't know it for the test set. That's, that's what you're trying to predict. And you have the zip code. So here's the deal. In many Kaggles, the training set is full of columns that you use to predict. Here you just have the zip code. Trust me, you're not going to build a very good model just by linking, just by trying to predict the score based only on the zip code. You're going to need to link something in. And by the way, another thing to be aware of when you are linking this, so joining multiple tables together, the leading zeros are stripped from this, from this data. So depending on which zip code databases you find and decide to make use of, you might have to add the leading zeros or strip the leading zeros from the others so that you don't have so that you don't have mismatches. Now there may be zip codes that are in the other table but not in this one. Uh, these new zip codes are sometimes added, uh, potentially removed. So you have to predict for all of the zip codes in this in the test set. If you, if you can't find a link on one given zip code, you, you might want to drop the row or you might want to average it if it is in the test set but you don't have data for it and you have to give a prediction. You have to predict on everything in the test set, just things that you'll have to be aware of as you try to get more, more data for this. And I'll show you one file that I highly recommend that you use with this. It's the same one that was used in the mid-semester assignment. Let's have a look at test because it looks pretty similar. And here we have test. So you'll notice we have the ID field. And by the way, remember how one was missing? That's because it's over on this side. And you have the zip code, but you have no score. This is what you're going to be evaluated on. You need to, you need to use those zip codes, join this to some other table or multiple tables, like we'll get into in just a second, and generate that score column. Let's go, let's look at the sample submission. The sample submission, this is, this is a fully compatible or fully Kaggle compliant submission file. You could submit this. You would get exactly the same thing as that average benchmark. So what I did to generate just the sample submission and to generate that average benchmark is I took all of the targets from the training took the average and then just put the average in for every single one. And this is this is what the file, you need to generate a file that looks like this to submit to Kaggle. You'll have the IDs and you'll have the scores. Ideally, you won't have every score the same thing like this. Like I said, this was just a simple, almost um, dummy solution that I, that I put together. This is very common in Kaggle competitions. They want to show you just what a sample submission actually looks like. So now we've seen all of the three files that I give you. There's not a lot of columns. You need to use that zip code and link to something else. That's part of the assignment for this one. Let's go back to the overview. I give you some information and I recommend essentially these two sites. Look at this one first. This contains the same file that you use for the mid-semester assignment. If you open that one, you can basically download it. Um, I would use this first one. That was the one that you used for your for your assignment. It takes it a moment to download, but we'll we'll take another look at it real real quick here. All right, here is the file. You can see zip codes, so you'll want to join based on this zip code to put additional information that you can predict on. You'll also want to do feature engineering. So let's think about this. First of all, zip code zero, we know that's junk. That is, 
I forget what exactly zip code zero was for in this file, uh, but it's it doesn't directly link to a zip code, so you'll most likely delete that file that that this first one zip code zero. You might also want to read up in the instructions on that page and see if there's see if you can make any use out of that one. I honestly don't know. I don't remember what that one was for. But here's the problem you need to deal with. Notice that there are six rows per zip code. The submission file only wants one row per zip code. So you need to figure out how to how to bring some of this together. You need to collapse some of these uh, some of these values. Now some of them are essential I mean you'll want to maybe average them or that would be a real good sort of first way to go at this would be to maybe average these all together and create one row for 35004 that has essentially the average of this, the average of this, the average of this, all the way across. Because essentially what this file is doing is it is breaking up. These are income bands. So it is giving you information different for each income band. If you can combine those income bands together, then you get a single row. And this is some of the feature engineering. How are you going to bring those various income bands together to make this hopefully a little more predictive? Now, I suggested a weighted average on the mid-semester assignment, but you'll want to think about this. I was using a weighted average to try to estimate what the actual income was for this level. Look, you'll want to read up on some of these other values. You may want to do a weighted average, you may not want to do a weighted average. Some of these columns are, for example, one is the number of elderly people by each income band. You may just want to know the number of elderly people. You may not care, you may not want to weight wealthy elderly people any different than poorer elderly people. So there's a lot of opportunities for feature engineering in this one, and I'll be very curious to see what you guys come up with. Another thing, any data file that you can find on the internet that has zip codes and statistics, you can use. That's fair game. This is dealing with saturation of businesses, so I'm thinking any zip code that, anything that told you maybe the size of a zip code, the population, Maybe the square feet or square miles in a zip code might be might be very useful. I give you another link back on the website, data.gov. There is all kinds of data at data.gov. I would search for data that has to do with zip codes. Uh, see if see if there's any data that looks interesting that you may want to augment your your data with. I know there's a number. Some of these are not even, some of these are just one row per zip code, so they would, they would link in very, very nicely with your, uh, with your zip code. There might be data on Wikipedia that's, that's useful. It's all up to you. This is part of the challenge of this particular Kaggle is we're using public data for this one. The other Kaggles that I've done in the previous semesters did not. So you're, see what you can find on the internet that might help you actually predict this. And you're predicting real values. You're predicting something to show you, to, to designate how saturated one particular market is in each of these zip codes. So I don't even know, to be totally honest with you, what the best scores that you'll likely and be able to achieve with this. This is this is some new data that I am, those scores in particular are new data that I am uh, looking to looking to learn more about and have been experiment just starting to experiment with myself. So I thought this would be a great Kaggle competition for the class. Okay, that's the Kaggle competition. These are usually a lot of fun, or at least they have been in previous semesters. So go ahead, get started. If you have any questions, definitely contact me for university students through the university, through the Canvas. And Piazza, for members of the internet, just post something in the comments and I will definitely respond to you. There is also a message area on the Kaggle, so I, I'll respond to any, any posts there as well. So might the students. Thank you very much, and if you find these kind of things interesting, want to stay up with future Kaggles that I'll have, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.